Hello, it's Amy here with Two West End Girls. Uh, Crystal and I are going to be making some uh, screen or block printed Christmas cards, and I wanted to show you a less expensive option rather than using the tradition silk, uh, traditional silk screen frame that you see here, which is wood. And the silk screen was originally made of silk, but now they use like a poly uh, fabric film that's used in the back of those for that kind of frame. But I'm going to show you a less expensive option to make your own uh, screen printing screens with an image that you can um, run ink or uh, paint through and create your own uh, screen printed Christmas cards. Stay tuned. So I have taken apart my embroidery hoop that you see here and I have a plastic hoop. They also come in wood and a variety of different styles and shapes and sizes. I would recommend a smaller frame, not a large one, because it's going to be hard to get the fabric really taut or tight to get a good clean crisp design. But a smaller frame, probably less than a 10 by 10 or a, a 10 inch circle or something like that would be fine for what we're going to do today. So I'm going to take my frame and I'm going to stretch a piece of chiffon in that frame and I'll come back to you in just a moment. So I have my frame in place over my fabric and I'm going to just gently snug it to tighten it up in the frame. I'll pull it tighter so that fabric, you don't see bubbles or wrinkles in it. And then I'm going to snug it up with that screw up here in the corner. I'll tighten it and then we'll trim away the excess fabric after it's good and firm and in place. And then we'll start working on our design. All right, so I've trimmed away my excess fabric and I've tightened up the screw. You want to be careful not to over tighten because you can crack these frames if you get carried away. But you want to get it really good and snug. You can see I still got a bubble here. I need to just gently kind of ease that out. But you'll go around the frame pulling away and gently tightening up to get the frame as snug as tight as you can because you want a, a good bouncy kind of like surface on the back. You want that nice and as firm as you can get it. Think of like a drum stretching a skin on a drum for a nice tight drum head, but this also helps you give a good flat surface for drawing your design on for your screen printing. Um, if you don't want to spend a lot of money on drawing your design out with um, a photosensitizing fluid and using a photo emulsion, you can use a simple like a Mod Podge. This is one I've got here. Um, and you can draw that onto the hoop leading out and drawing around the design that you see here and leaving the area that's the actual design itself uncovered with Mod Podge. Here's a letter B that I've done before that my daughters use for a little screen print. For this one she used pantyhose and we tried it and it does a decent print but I think that the um, chiffon or a fabric that you can pull taut or tight will be better if, as long as it's more rigid because you don't have to worry about paint flowing up underneath the surface if the, the um, screen were to stretch any. But we did try this method. Mod Podge recommends this method but I'm going to try the chiffon method with my deer that you see here or the design I choose to go with. So stay with us. So as you can see here, I've also stretched out a small wooden frame too. This is one that previously had a piece of pantyhose in it and had Mod Podge on it. And you can do a simple design in a small frame like this that you can paint out a design with the Mod Podge in the negative space and the positive space being the shape that you'll actually make into the print. So Crystal has some copies of a tree design that she's going to use for her Christmas card. She's got a, a blank and it's important that we're using, uh, when you're using Mod Podge, that you have a pretty simple design. You don't want a really detailed, complex design because you have to spread the Mod Podge out with a brush and you have to watch where it spreads on the screen. Now we're also... Uh, how we're cutting out, making uh, the rubber stamps. Right here is a couple that she has already previously made. And we're going to use these for postage on the corners of our envelopes, especially if we hand deliver. It's nice to have this on there. It adds a little something extra to your um, hand-delivered Christmas cards. So it's fantastic. But I'm going to go ahead and take this pink eraser, and Crystal's written a little word that she wants to be on there with her tree. She wants it to say, ho, ho, ho. So we wrote it backwards where it says, oh, you remember your design will be backwards once you print with it. So I'm going to cut off the excess eraser we don't need. Just trim that away. And I've got an X-Acto knife. And I need a cutting mat under this rather than just a brown bag. So make sure that you have a good cutting surface. Uh, if you have a good cutting board or an old cutting board or one of the little uh, proper cutting mats, that's good. Then you'll take your X-Acto and if you have any kind of carving tools for printing or leno printing, leno cutting, use those because they give you a good clean line in your designs. But I'm going to take the X-Acto knife and go around the letters that Crystal's drawn. And I, it takes a little work and finagling with the tips on the exactos too, but it can be done. And just remember to watch your fingertips so you don't get cut. You want to be careful. Better you doing that than me. I'd say that you can do this too. So I've carved out in the pink area we're going to remove and we're going to leave the black area. And you'll carve down roughly, let's say an eighth of an inch deep. 
so that when we actually print with this design, the ink does not stick to the pink areas, but only to the black areas to leave the print that we want in the littering. So I'm trying to watch that I'm moving my edge away from my fingers too. And for me, in this case, since this is on the inside, I'm gonna cut down an angle to slice away that excess that we don't need. It takes a little work with a utility knife. The carving and leno cut tools are a lot cleaner to do this with. And I've kind of messed up the O edge too, so I'm gonna have to come back in and clean that up a little bit. So we're gonna take out that, and that means that this surface that's cut down into where it's recessed won't get printing ink on it like the black areas will. So I'm gonna keep working on this and I'll come back to you in a few minutes when I have more of it done. Okay, so we removed and cut away and created this relief where it's cut back away from the letters H and O. It makes our ho, ho, ho for a Christmas card. Um, and the O is not quite the way I want it yet. You can see that I've already done a little bit of printing really quick. I put some ink on my stamp and Crystal's little ho, ho, ho is down through there. I'm gonna do some cleanup around the O and you can go back and keep reworking though until you get the design that you want. But this, uh, this pink eraser, you can even use the white erasers as a nice and expensive way to make a stamp that's personalized just for you and great for the holidays or any holiday. So since Crystal's going to be creating a, helps. a negative print, yes it does, doesn't it? It definitely yeah. does. We've got Mod Podge on the plate right here and the Mod Podge dries quickly so you have to work fairly quick so it doesn't get stuck in your brush. And uh, the matte and gloss ones I know are permanent. They may have a semi-permanent, I don't know. But the Mod Podge in general is like a decoupage solution. It's like a heavy glue. And once it dries, it dries and it becomes water resistant. Um, it does swell a little bit with water, but it can be reused. It's the reason why it makes a great, inexpensive version of a printing resist that we see here. But Crystal's just going to go around her tree and design, and we'll come back in a few minutes and see how it looks. Okay, Crystal's finishing up her design with Mod Podge. She's going to go all the way around to the edge of the frame. And this will make it kind of stick to the frame. But the frames, later on, if you finish with this design and you want to peel away that fabric, you can take the fabric off the frame and just gently peel it back. It might take a little work. You might have to use a little bit of an X-Acto or something to get it off later, but the frame can be reused, but she's got a nice coating. Uh, this frame may be a little bit big for this design, but it'll be fine because she's going to be using the paint or the printing uh, ink right there where the tree is at. And then she'll be stamping below that on the card once the tree is dried. I think that's got it. I think so. Good job. So Crystal and I have some graduation gifts that we're going to be uh, getting soon too and we didn't have a card or a stamp that would be appropriate for congratulations so we just took a, another one of our pink erasers and excuse me and we made a little mortarboard or a little board and cap there for graduation so made another stamp. Woohoo!